Hello everybody, Bart Barker with Wilson County Schools. Hope you have had a wonderful day. Did you know, today is National Teachers Day. We love our teachers. It is Cinco de Mayo, of course, and it is also Taco Tuesday. I'm sure many of you had tacos on the menu tonight. Oops, mine just fell over. Yes, that's a Doritos shell. And if you know, then you know, and you know it's good. If you haven't had it, trust us on this one. Hey, what we wanted to do was circle back with you over the placement plan for West Wilson Middle and Stoner Creek Elementary that Director of Schools, Dr. Dinah Wright, presented last night to the school board. It was approved 7-0 across the board. Uh, she has great faith in the plan. So does the board. Uh, a lot of details and planning went into that final plan. And what we want to do tonight is take you behind the curtain and uh, just tell you a, a lot about what actually went into this plan that involves West Wilson Middle and Stoner Creek. Again, a lot of moving parts to it. So what do you say? We get Dr. Donna Wright on the line and just go from there. She'll give you an update on kind of what all went into this. So uh, it should be some, uh, some great viewing for sure. So let's just sit back and eat our tacos and get Dr. Wright on the line. I better finish this first though. <laughs> just kind of tell people uh, all the variables and, and the things that led to this decision. There was a lot of moving, uh, moving parts behind the scenes, of course. Well, you know, and you're exactly right, Bart. And I guess I have to, you know, sort of add to it that's sort of the things that we knew we weren't going to consider. Uh, we weren't going to look at portable buildings. Uh, we weren't going to look at maybe, you know, moving kids to different parts of the county where we might have space available because that would have been a hardship on parents. Uh, we knew that whatever we did, uh, we needed to make sure that it was as far as proximity to the existing neighborhoods where uh, the children, uh, the students resided. So there was a lot of pieces that were the, the things that I like to tack on the board and say, okay, here are the non-negotiables. And that's really uh, what we started. And then it was to look at not so much the limitations, but what did we have available we could that we could make work. And it was... You know, and I started out last night that, you know, the one thing that we were so thankful that it, we didn't lose three schools. Uh, it was unfortunate to lose two, but it was very, uh, it was a real possibility we'd put, we could have lost three. And then, you know, we would have had a whole different set of dynamics to work from. The second thing that, you know, again, became a blessing is that we have a new high school, mm -hmm. uh, which was to address the overcrowding in the three existing high schools. So those were things that, I mean, I literally post things up so I can, see it and, and start looking at it um, from that venue. There were, there was, and, and to be in all uh, honesty, there was about three things that we were looking at the, as possibilities, but I also had to look at where we were coming off of as far as 60 days uh, at this point being out of school by the time we look at going into uh, the new school year. And so what could we do to minimize additional hardship for the families? because you know this this has been tough and i also have to consider that our teachers are part of our families as well so what could we do to minimize that and what could we live with for one year mm -hmm. and so with that it started looking at as far as what are the natural feeders um particularly because of the rezoning and what are the configurations for grade bands for elementary and secondary well that divided up right there we've got k6 we got 712. And the model that most people are used to is this, this K5, 6, 7, and 8 for middle, and then uh, 9 through 12. When we started looking at our numbers as we started drawing down because of the rezoning, we had capacity at Green Hill High School. They're right at 1,300 with current enrollment. And Mount Juliet High School, a little over about 1,325, give or take some new enrollments that have already started coming in which brings them down from about seven or 800 from where they were uh, prior to March the 3rd. So looking at that and looking at the numbers as far as seventh and eighth grade coming out Mount, out of Mount Juliet Middle School, which would feed into Green Hill High School, which is that the feeder. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the existing, the displaced students out of West Wilson Middle School, seventh and eighth grade, about 745. What happens if we move those again, I'm looking at logistics as far as transporting because it's not, it's difficult in high school, but it's difficult as far as, uh, again, another hardship for parents if we can't provide transportation. So I looked at existing six through 12 uh, bus routes and that became something that 
brought some ease to the plan itself. So the big thing being, and probably the one that brought more motion to any part, particularly even with the emergency plan to finish out this school year, was looking at K-5, which would be Stoner Creek, keeping them together, full day, um, no displacement as far as dividing them up, and uh, Mount Juliet Middle School, which used to be Mount Juliet High School years ago, became um, what we were looking at as far as we could put all of K-5 in Mount Juliet Middle. Mm -hmm. And then the piece that I still had not placed, and I keep, keep saying this as I, and I don't mean to, but it's simply that it was one of those things that, this is, these are the kind of things that keep me up at night. So I was looking at that sixth grade that from Mount Juliet Middle School, West Wilson Middle School, and we're looking at this time at about 700 students. Mm -hmm. um, and we have about 600 students coming out of Stoner Creek. Well, the capacity, and at one time Mount Juliet Middle School housed 1,600 students. So we had the ability to put a K-5 in the lower um, floor, the bottom floor at uh, Mount Juliet Middle School. And we can move the sixth grade upstairs, second floor, but we also have all the facilities as far as access to uh, all the programs that become very important. Because one of the first questions I was asked, um, I mean, right out of the gate, you know, our middle schools have a strong exploratory program like theater and, um, you know, the drama, the music uh, band. And I said, well, that doesn't change mm -hmm. because what is the, with this model, we have every school in close proximity. And so even the sixth grade, as, as far as even though they'll be housed at Mount Juliet Middle School, they're not going to be out of position as far as um, the sixth graders that would feed into Mount Juliet High School uh, when they become ninth graders or the sixth graders that uh, uh, are at Mount Juliet Middle that would go into Green Hill. So a lot of moving pieces. Um, it's going to be tight mm -hmm. for a year. But the best piece, if, if anything, the other models that I looked at and considered um, – Let's say that we need an extra month or two because the two schools that we're going to have to rebuild, uh, West Wilson and uh, Stoner Creek, we're hoping that by the time we break ground, it's 14 months. That's what the construction uh, people that we're working with are proposing. Mm -hmm. But let's say that if we have, you know, bad, bad weather, experienced, <laughs> You're right? And let's say it takes 15 months or 16 right. months. It's going to be okay because there's not going to be anything disruptive that when the school opens, they can transition at any time mm -hmm. because we've got senior classes that will exit out of both high schools, which means the eighth graders, if we're going to have already bumped into ninth grade. And so we can transition very easily without missing a beat. And that sort of sealed it as far as looking at this uh, model. And, uh, and it's really not a model. This is a configuration that's been used for years. Um, in many places and at one time wilson county also had k-6 mm -hmm. um school so um it was one that worked on it very deliberately very slowly i know that it was really creating some angst among people as far as when is it going to be released but i let just a few people really critique it and, and critique it hard and look at all the you know positive but also what were the limitations to this and, um, and it gave some time to work some of those things out. We've got the staggered lunches that you're not seeing grade levels uh, as far as like uh, uh, elementary students eating lunch at the same time as the sixth graders. Mm -hmm. They'll have different lunches. And same thing at the high schools. Um, we're going to start at 7.30 in the morning for elementary. Sixth graders are not going to start until 8.30. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, we're trying to really limit as far as crossovers. Uh, there'll still be a lot of the activities and it went in particularly for the eighth graders going into their uh, uh, high schools a year early. They're going to have access to high school classes uh, as appropriate and uh, whether it's algebra one, geometry, uh, world languages, but they're also going to have some ac have access to some of the CTE classes like coding, principles of engineering, um, agri-science. So, and so there's a lot of positives uh, mm -hmm. that we can start uh, for the uh, students that are into a new setting and uh, excited about it. And I've had nothing but a lot of positive comments and, uh, and you know, and, and some questions that are really good questions. Um, that, and I, I asked that last night, uh, I said, please, you know, if there's anything that gives you pause or uh, something that you need to think, you know, 
send it to us, ask us, let us know. Mm -hmm. But in the same sense too, Bart, I also uh, placed out there that if parents are apprehensive or this is something they just don't, do not feel comfortable with, um, the elementary students, um, parents can ask for a transfer to either Springdale, uh, Lakeview or Mount Juliet Elementary, mm -hmm. but they would have to provide their own transportation. And likewise for middle school students, if parents wanted uh, for that year's, uh, as far as not, uh, I guess, the large setting, uh, they can request a transfer to uh, Glable Middle School, the, the new middle school that we opened mm -hmm. this year. And uh, and we will uh, gladly help them. But again, they will have to provide their own transportation. And they need to do that quickly if, they're, if they want to do that, rather sooner rather than later, I would imagine. That would be good because right now, uh, that's why it was so uh, critical that not only were we working through transfer requests, but also looking at this model, I, I needed to make sure I was staying on top of our numbers mm -hmm. um, because again, we're going to be very tight and, um, and I, I, I just, there's, there's very little allowances and I don't want to compromise any of our programs that students will have access to just because of being um, uh, over capacity. So we, if, if that's a, uh, something that parents are considering, if they'll at least uh, reach out to us and let us know, we'll, we'll help them through the process. Well, that's a very uh, comprehensive explanation, and I'm not really sure I can add a whole lot more to that. I know there's another thing that uh, question that we do get, and we can go ahead and just kind of chat a little bit about it now, because uh, it's what the world's talking about. And the question is, you know, what if what if things aren't what you call quote unquote back to normal by August? You know, and that's a and you said last night at the oh. meeting that's the million dollar question. And uh, one that we just don't uh, have the check to write to figure out the answer today. That is something that will come with guidance and those sorts of things. But uh, those conversations are being had um, yes. within our district. And we want people to understand that as well. Yeah. In fact, uh, that was one of the things that I did mention last time because we've already set the stage in something that we're working on um, right now. Uh, and it's not about being in preparation. It's more of what if, uh, simply because everyone, I don't care where you were in this country, everyone was caught off guard, uh, not only by, uh, it, it, it was, it's not about even being sudden, but the impact mm -hmm. and that the idea that things would shut down, including schools. And so two things that I've charged um, our schools with, and we've, we're having this discussion and we'll continue because we have time now, as far as what I'm referring to as an entry plan for every school. Mm -hmm. And as they welcome students back, whether it's August 6th or even if it's September, what is what will be their plan to do a, a quick diagnostic for every student? And much of this for parents, uh, because parents are concerned of being out of school so long. Have they lost ground? Uh, where are they going to be? Uh, are they going to be okay moving into a grade you didn't hold them back? Well, it's something, as I reassured the board last night, it's not any different from what happens when they come back after summer. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our students are very resilient and it's amazing that what, with not only prompting, but looking at, I don't even call it a review, but just sort of assessment as far as where are they in their learning? Do, where do we need to refresh? Is there any area that we need to mm -hmm. reteach? And we've got some really strong diagnostic tools that are quick, easy, give teachers a really good snapshot, but make sure that first two weeks, and if it might take longer for uh, individual students before we ever introduce new material. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty of it because again, it, the most horrid feeling is for a child to come into a setting and they're launching into new information, new learning, new instruction, and they have a huge gap for whatever reason. And uh, as I reminded a parent not too long ago, you know, prior to even uh, the tornado and the pandemic, we had the flu. Yeah. And so we had students that were, you know, um, you know, out for multiple days. So we are going to do that, take that kind of assessment. But as a district, and I'm, I, I've used the word contingency, but that's not even a good word. And I go back to the what if, what if, whether it's inclement weather, whether it's a pandemic, whatever that might bring us out of school for an unknown period of time, mm -hmm. what is the fallback plan? Uh, that would be able that we would be able to implement quickly and uh, and and more or less make sure that with um, I guess the inequities that we have in this county and again when I say that people jump immediately as far as what they perceive that to be but I've shared this before we have huge gaps in broadband 
access in this county. And it's not about affordability. It's not about, and it could be in some cases, but not always. But we have areas that are not provided any service at all. Mm -hmm. And so we have to figure out what we can do to more or less um, bridge that gap, for, not only for our students, but for our families as well. And so this is something that we're going to be looking at over the summer as far as what is it, what will the plan be? Um, if, it'll give us the, big, the, the big if, <laughs> yeah, if. yeah, the big if, <laughs> and um, but also gives an opportunity to start looking at blended learning models as far as that how you how do you extend the, the classroom mm -hmm. beyond regular school hours, and uh, it, it gives us really a unique opportunity. So I'm I'm looking at lemonade right now instead of lemons, <laughs> right. and uh, and how we can make that into a really unique opportunity for any age group kids because the other thing that we also know that if they don't have internet access, there is so much that we can have download that, that offline that could be provided to students mm -hmm. and then remind them how many families at least have those smartphones that have hotspots on them mm -hmm. that would give them uh, access there too. So there's gonna be a lot of training take place, uh, much of it to make sure that teachers are equipped uh, and really do some of these tech cafes with including our families as being part of it so that we're all prepared um, for whatever, um, comes our way. And I, you know, and I, I laughingly say that, you know, we've had the floods, we've had, um, the tornadoes we've had, uh, we're in the midst of a pandemic. 20, uh, 2020 has just not been the, uh, <laughs> the best year <laughs> all the way around because it seems like things are changing on a weekly basis. And as we go through like the coming months in the summer, we certainly just want to let our parents know that, um, any new information that we get from the state um, and involving the pandemic and what that looks like as we head into fall 2020 in, in school and those sorts of things, our parents, um, students, they will know what's going on. It's uh, so they will have a big heads up on what the plans are. Hopefully everything just starts right on time. We don't anticipate um, that not being the case, but again, anything is possible as we have learned so far through several events this year. In fact, that's our, that's our whole goal. We're not, it's not to, you know, to look that we don't start, we are prepared and that's what we're working um, on right now as far as that we'll be ready to go. But again, the communication will be there and, and Bart, every opportunity that we have that you provide us as far as getting that information out, I think not only is it helpful, but to make sure that, um, let parents know that we are as eager to get back to school as they are to have their children in school. Correct, yes. And, uh, and we don't like those missed opportunities by not having uh, our students with us. So that's that's our goal. Well, sounds good. Well, uh, again, the feedback has been great on the plan that was rolled out last night. We look forward to putting that plan in play. We know more questions will be coming in and we'll certainly answer those, but we do appreciate your time this evening so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, have a good night. You too, bye-bye.